This is my French horn, and I've performed on it for about 20 years, and it's been really great. It's not the only way I perform. I perform as a teacher. I do magic as a hobby, so I get to perform magic as well. <laughs> I love performance, <laughs> it's kind of obvious. I'm obsessed with it, I like discussing it, I like teaching it, studying it, doing it. Now, fearless performance, something I've become obsessed with in order to teach those other people to get scared in performance, to, form, to perform fearlessly. I never get scared, I'm always calm, I'm naturally fearless, and I'm really, really lying right now. <laughs> 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 yeah, those naturally fearless people that you see, they don't actually exist, and if they do, it you know, definitely didn't happen for me. But the good news is that we are not naturally fearful in performance either. We are born fearless, and we learn to fear. And my calm delivery and successes through performance have come from a lot of work and a lot of learning from my good and bad choices. <laughs> so I perform classical music all over the world, and I grew up on a pig farm. And uh, I was just made full professor here at North America's top music school at IU. Thank you. And I never finished my bachelor's degree. So I've had lots of potential to fear. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so I've had lots of potential to doubt myself in performance and fear, and I do. But I've also figured out how to fool people into thinking I'm a fearless performer. So, think of all the places that you perform in your life. Performance doesn't just happen on a stage. It can happen uh, on the baseball diamond, or I do have slides as well. <laughs> uh, it can happen in school, whether you're a teacher or a student. It can happen in a boardroom. It can happen um, in a restaurant, if you're the restaurant manager or a waiter. It can happen when you're explaining yourself, when you're introducing yourself. American Idol hopefuls perform, but we al I also perform at home when I'm cooking as well. So you're engaged in performance when what you are doing matters. To make a performance, a fearless performance, make what you are doing the only thing that matters. So you're not worried about what other people think about you, you're not worried about what you could, might get or might not get due to your performance. Uh, what's your name sitting right here in the corner? Gail. Gail, everyone, everyone, Gail. Nice, nice performance, nice performance. Did you get a little rush from the room when uh, the energy came to you? I get that too. Even on the easiest of questions, what's your name? I'm Jeff. Yes, I got it right again. <laughs> I nailed it. Walking away, having no idea what that person's name is, though, of course. Um, so do you get that too? Uh, Jennifer, was it? Okay. Um, <laughs> so even the easiest of questions becomes complicated when we decide we're performing. Everybody right now, say your first name. Jeff. <laughs> Now I'm going to pick someone. Sarah has a spotlight. She's going to shine it on someone that I pick. You're going to say your name again. Okay, I won't do it. Whew. But did you, f <laughs> did you feel a little bit of fear when my finger came close to you? <laughs> and did you feel relief when I said I wasn't going to do it? <laughs> and I was just going to get you to say your name again. <laughs> but I also feel that fear and think, don't pick me, don't pick me. Um, but I just got really good at replacing my fears. So. Mm -hmm. Have you ever perform performed something alone and have it go a certain way and then go to perform it for someone else and have it go not quite as well? Uh-huh, okay, I'm not alone, me too. Here's how I learned that fear is always a choice in performance. I was playing my horn and then I looked up and I saw someone was watching me. I got nervous, they made me nervous, like magic. Um, but then I heard that they had been there for half an hour. So if they made me nervous, why wasn't I nervous half an hour earlier? It's not. Our, the, it's not the presence of our audience that makes us nervous. It's our awareness of the presence of our audience. But ask yourself this. We also choose what kind of awareness to have. If that person watching us was three years old, would we have got nervous? There's three factors that go into performance. The what is what you perform, and that's uh, what you think Mozart uh, meant when he wrote what he wrote, <coughs> or what you want it to sound like, uh, what you say to a stranger when you go to meet them, or um, what your product does. Very important, become obsessed with your what and really good at it. Your how is how you perform. How you play your instrument for a musician, but um, how you sell your product or how you act around a stranger. Become an expert in this as well. The why is more in the heart, and it's why we perform. Why we walk out on stage, why we go up to this person to meet them, and why we have a company, and why we're selling this product. 
I think we obsess about what and how plenty. We can, I think, evolve our, our why a lot more. And when I do, my performances get easier and better. So I want to give you three big ideas for fearless performance. And the first is surrender. You can't control perception. You can only control presentation. You have a choice when you go out to perform. You can go out and go, OK, I'm gonna, it, during performance, go, OK, I'm going to talk to these people. They look uh, important. And uh, that guy's upset. I might throw in a joke. And if it's funny enough, I might get to meet Ted. <laughs> <Be great. laughs> or surrender to that and focus on your presentation because you can't control the perception during your performance. It's a wasted energy. O Olympic athletes say execute. Focus on what you're doing. Be creative. Fearlessness is not necessarily the lack of fear, but rather the choice that there are things more important than fear. When I say I fool people, I only have to fool myself. <laughs> so I call it selective naivety or selective idiocy, selective stupidity. Uh, and I do this by using fear replacements. I use one, and I use it as long as possible. And then uh, when that one stops working, I use another one. Here's a whole bunch. Um, write them down on a sheet of paper. I just looked at a few backstage before I walked out. So I have gamified fear replacement. I've made it into a game. Be creative. <clears throat> oh, and this is, these are two ways of being creative. And the first is, if I, if I know I'm doing something destructive that I shouldn't do, I just tell myself, hey, Jeff, don't do that. And I, it's easy. I'm done. I don't do it ever again. <laughs> OK, that doesn't work. Uh, everybody right now, your solution is don't think of the color green, not green, don't think green, not green, don't think green. So you end up thinking green and then replacing it with something else. But if I say your solution is think of the color yellow, just like magic, you are on your solution. You don't have to know what not to think about. My successes have come by stumbling toward my solutions, wording everything in what to do instead of what not to do. Perform as often as possible. Get out there and perform. Stop waiting for that perfect time where your content is bulletproof, your network is big enough, or you've lost those last 10 pounds. Just get out there now. If I would have waited till I was ready to win my first audition in order for me to do my first audition, I'd still be waiting to do my first audition. So I used to work really hard at getting what I wanted, and I didn't usually get what I wanted. <laughs> so looking back, it wasn't until I changed my reasons why I was doing something from getting to sharing. I used to do th something to get a job, or impress someone, or make a sale. And uh, you know, me, 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 more is more, this way. So it wasn't until I shifted to sharing and started doing things for better reasons, like um, sharing things with an appreciative audience, or sharing beautiful music, or making a new friend, or uh, sharing information with an eager student. So just get out there and share your stuff. So when you prepare to perform, make it about you and make it about getting really good at what you do. But once you enter into your performance, get over yourself. Instead of bringing the energy to you, spin it outwardly and make it a great gift, a fearless gift, of sharing something that matters to you. There's a great movie, um, Monty Python, The Life of Brian, and the emperor comes out and says, you are all individuals. And the one guy in the back goes, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you are all individuals. <laughs> And you all have something to share, and we need you to share it. So uh, it's not easy all the time, but uh, there's nothing more important. But don't make the mistake of seeing other people share and think it's easy for them. But right now, we need to suck it up and believe in ourselves and help each other believe in the person, believe in them, themselves, and just share our stuff. In my last 30 seconds, I want you to take a look at my son. <laughs> And he is, and he hasn't even done anything. He's just sitting there. Uh, he is the most fearless performer I know. <laughs> and uh, he's not very good at performing many things. <laughs> but do we question his worth in performance? When he does something, we see it as being full of greatness. And uh, he may not be hireable right now, but that's what, that's what tomorrow is for. He can get better. But he's a fearless performer because he doesn't doubt himself in performance. He doesn't question his own self-worth. So get to be an expert <laughs> at how you do things and what you do. But let's put some more energy into why we do it and evolve why we do it so that we can all share in a, little, a lot more fearless performance in the world and do it to respect our past, do it for our future, do it for our children, do it for the child in you, and do it for no reason at all 
but to share. Thank you. <laughs>